Here is a need to know nursing consideration for your fresh tracheostomy patient. Bleeding can occur in small amounts, but constant bleeding is abnormal and the surgeon should be notified immediately. Hey, what's up everyone? Christina, nurse practitioner here. I understand tracheostomies can be a bit intimidating if you're new to them. This is why I have created this video as a quick review to discuss the parts of a tracheostomy such as disposable versus non-disposable inner cannula, cuffed versus uncuffed, and why we need an obturator at the bedside. So be sure to watch till the end, my friend, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I help nursing students through educational content, strategies, and practical tips. If that sounds like something you're into, consider subscribing. Let's get started. Let's begin with the fact. Tracheostomies can be permanent or temporary for a short duration of time. A tracheostomy can take place in the event of an emergency or a scheduled procedure. This is where an incision is made in the second, third, and fourth tracheal rings and an opening is made in the anterior neck near the trachea called the tracheal stoma. The tracheal stoma is the new artificial airway where gas exchange is maintained. Here are two nursing tips I want to discuss with you. So immediately post-operatively, you want to monitor for bilateral breast sounds at minimum every hour because of the risk of a potential pneumothorax. Also, subcutaneous emphysema can occur from a tear in the trachea as air will leak into the tissue of the neck creating this like crackly sound that can be audible to the naked ear. It's kind of cool to assess and feel. Some reasons for a tracheostomy placement is for airway protection and could be from a facial burn or an emergency trauma. This could also apply for your patient that was like in an ICU setting on a ventilator for respiratory failure. Let's say they were unable to be extubated and the patient passed the 14 day mark of being on a ventilator. This is where a dialogue would occur with the ICU team and the family um, to decide on plan of care if a tracheostomy placement is appropriate. Here is another nursing tip. If your patient is having a difficult time with breathing or you're having trouble with suctioning or inserting a tube to suction, sometimes it can be a tube obstruction that can occur from an increase in secretions or displacement. Okay, so let's go over the parts of a tracheostomy tube. You have your face plate, then on both lateral sides of the face plate are the slots for your trach ties to be placed. I never ever replace solo. I always make sure an RT is at the bedside. Another key fact, monitor for swelling of the neck, especially your patient with a fresh trach, you should be able to place a finger beneath the trach ties and some nurses may measure the neck with a paper measuring tape for your fresh post-op patients. Be sure to notify your MD of any increase in size of the neck. They'll appreciate it greatly. So looking back at the photo, this is your outer cannula. Here is your cuff that is deflated in this scenario, which is also attached to the pilot balloon where air can be added with a syringe. Then you have your inner cannula to be changed per hospital or agency guidelines, Q4 hours or per protocol and as needed. Um, this is your obturator. It should be at the bedside, typically in a sealed bag within reach, just in case your tracheostomy gets dislodged or decannulated. This is what you'll place. And then here is your fenestrated tube versus non-fenestrated tube. Um, if the inner cannula is in place, the fenestrated tube is closed and functions normally. When the inner cannula is removed and the fenestrated tube is locked in place, this allows for air exchange, allowing the patient to cough and speak. So the fenestrated tube allows the patient to speak with the use of the passamere valve, which is a purple cap, um, to be ordered by a physician and placed by speech therapy. So there are different types of tracheostomies such as a single lumen tube, um, a double lumen tube, your cuff tubes which you just mentioned, uncuffed tubes, and fenestrated tubes. So upon receiving the patient you will want to know what type of tracheostomy. Um, the shyly size of the inner cannula usually ranges from six to eight. If it's disposable or non-disposable, when was the last trach care, any skin breakdown around the trach site, and where the obturator is at the bedside. Here is a nursing tip. If 
Tube dislodgement or decannulation occurs within the first 72 hours. It is considered a medical emergency because the opening is not mature and can be difficult to replace. And the patient may not be able to be ventilated adequately. So here are some Q&A question and answers I have been asked by nursing students that I wanted to share with you. Um, one of them has been, why do tracheostomies come as cuffed or uncuffed? What's the difference? Great question. So a cuffed tube is used for the patient on a ventilator. This cuff forms a balloon to prevent air movement from escaping the trachea. This is done by inflating air through the pilot balloon, as we just mentioned, and the pilot balloon can be assessed to see if it is inflated or deflated by the amount of air in the pilot balloon by gently like squeezing it or touching it. Here is another key nursing pearl. If the patient is on a ventilator and the mechanical ventilator is alarming high peak pressure, it gets super loud when you hear that, um, it can be from a tube obstruction. Another question I have been asked is, what is the difference between a disposable inner cannula versus non-disposable inner cannula? So a disposable inner cannula is more commonly used that can be exchanged per your local policy guidelines toss and you just put a new one in. The non-disposable inner cannulas need to be cleaned and reinserted. I've noticed from personal experience when cleaned, although it needs to be done more than once a shift, it seems to cause more throat irritation because it can be wet and irritating to the airway. It just tends to cause patient discomfort with reinsertion sometimes. Okay, we just covered the different types of tracheostomies and reasons for use, but this brings up the topic on the different types of oxygen therapy. Be sure to click on the card and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.